Hi and welcome to another tutorial on coding in C Sharp. In this tutorial we're going to look at how to convert variable types. So how to convert a variable from using one data type to another type. Okay, so for example converting from string to integer or float. So if we've got a number that's stored as a string we can convert that to an integer or a float. Or the other way around, so converting a string into an integer or float, for example. So um, what we'll do is we'll just clear the code that we have inside this main method. So we'll just delete that so there's nothing in there. And what we'll do first is um, we'll just look at um, strings. So in uh, one of the previous tutorials, I showed you how to use console.readLine to wait for the user to enter some input on the keyboard. Okay, so just to press a key or something like that before continuing on with the rest of the program. So we've used console.readLine in one of the previous tutorials, but we can also use that statement to actually store the input and what the user types in to the keyboard. So what we'll do first is we'll just work with strings. So we'll display, display a message like console. Uh, we'll use console.writeLine to display a message like enter your name. Okay, oops, just close that there. All right, so we've got enter your name, let's add a little space there. And what we can do is um, use the console.readline statement to wait for user input and store that input. And we can store it in a string variable. So we can say something like string um, users or username equals console.readline. Okay, so what this will do is it will get the input from the user on the keyboard and store it in the string variable called username. Okay, then what we can do is just say console.writeLine and we can display a message like hello, hello there, plus their name. Okay, so we can display the string hello there and then add their username onto the end of that. Okay, so let's run that. All right, so we're asked to enter a name, just enter a name like Joe Blogs and hit return or enter. And then we get, hello there, Joe Blogs. Okay, cool, so that works. So with a console.readLine statement, when it takes input from the user, it's going to store it as a string. So now if what we want to do is maybe get some number input from the user and work with those numbers, then we're going to need to convert those numbers from being in string format or of the string type to either an integer or a float. So let's say, for example, we want to get the user to enter two numbers and then we'll add those two numbers together. All right, so what we can do is display another message, console.writeLine, enter two numbers. Okay. And we can store, instead of um, storing the uh, input in a string variable, we can store it in a float variable. So we can say float num1 for the first number that they enter. And then what we can do is we can use that console.readline statement again to store their input. And I'll show you what happens when we do it this way. I'll also put in the second variable here, so num2, we'll get that input from the user as well. And then we can just display the output in a message in the console. We can say num1 plus num2, and it should display the output there. But you can notice that already the code here has red underlines. So we've got console.readline, there's a red underline. Now if we move the mouse over that, it says error, cannot implicitly convert type string to float. So what that means is we're getting input from the user which is stored as a string and we're trying to convert that into an integer. It's saying, it's saying cannot implicitly convert type string to float. So we're basically trying to store a string variable or string value in a float variable which isn't going to work. So what we can actually do at the start just before console.reline we can say float.pass and then put that console.readline statement inside uh, an open and close bracket. So we've got float.pass and then in brackets console.readline. 
read line. Okay, so what that will actually do is convert that string value to a float value before it stores it in that float variable. All right, so do that for the second one as well. And now we'll run this. And so enter a name, show blogs, enter two numbers. So first number will just be five, we'll hit return and enter the second number, we'll just make that 10, hit return. And then we get there the total calculated and display, which is 15. All right, we could also add a message there like the total is or the result is and see what happens. There we go. So this time, however, the result is a little bit different. Okay, so what we get is the result is 5, 10. And so what this is actually doing is instead of adding 5 and 10 together, it's actually, instead of getting the total the sum of 5 and 10, it's actually saying the result is and then just displaying 5 and 10. Um, now, that's not really what we want. Okay, so what we could do is we could put this in brackets and run it now. And there we go, we get the result is 15. So just by putting num1 plus num2 in brackets, that's actually going to run that calculation there, add the two numbers together, get the total, and then display that after saying the result is. Okay, so grouping with brackets can help out there. Okay, now maybe um, we want to store a, uh, and by the way, just before we move on, we can, we can do, oops, we can do float dot pass. We can also do int dot pass as well if we want to work with integer variables. Okay, um, but what if we want to convert a, an integer to a string? Or, or a float to a string. Well, we can do that too. So we can maybe make a float variable, call it num3, and just give it a value like five. Okay, so we've got a new float variable called num3. It's got an initial value of five. Now, if we wanted to convert this to a string, we could maybe add another variable here, float num4 equals 10. If we wanted to display these two variables uh, next to each other, so maybe we just want to say five and 10 rather than adding five together, or we could convert these to strings as well. So let's say we write console.write line num3 plus num4. If we write that, what we'll actually get is five plus 10. So we'll get a result of 15. Okay. so. I might just comment out all of this code here. So I can just highlight all of that, click on uh, edit, format, and toggle line comments. So all of this code here is now commented out. It won't actually run. And now we'll just run this code here. So let's run that, see what we get. It should just get a total of 15 displayed there. All right, now what we can actually do is put num 32 string plus num4 dot to string and then open close bracket. And now if we run that, we get five followed by 10. Okay, so what's actually happening here is we're taking the num3 variable, which has the value five, and instead of treating it as a float um, or an integer, it could just be, we could change these to integers as well because they are actually whole numbers. So instead of treating this as an integer, we're converting it to a string here. And we're not actually changing the variable into a string. We're just using it as a string on this line here in this statement. And we're doing the same with num4 variable. We're uh, using that as a string here. So you can convert either string, uh, floats or integers to a string um, in a statement like that. If you wanted to, um, have it stored in a variable permanently as a string, then you could create a new variable. Um, and so for example, string uh, number equals 
num3 dot to string or something like that. So you can convert something to a string. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. That is how to um, convert variable types in C sharp. Thanks for watching.